Welcome to Views Day Tuesday. Today it's the Quiet as Mouse Book Club and I am reviewing Hidden Figures by Margot Lee Shetterly. This is a 2016 non-fiction book and it was released only a few months before the film that was adapted from it, which you may know or have seen. It starred Taraji P. Henson, Octavia Spencer and Janelle Monae. It follows the lives of several African-American mathematicians known as computers from around the 1930s to the 1960s who worked at NASA during the space race. It's mainly concerned with the three women who are the main characters in the film. So so Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughan and Mary Jackson, but also several others. The women face discrimination and segregation due to their race and gender, which the book details and it also goes into a bit of depth on the work they were involved with. The topic is a very important one and I am very glad that I have read this book and now know more about these women and the world that they lived in. You no, know, this is an important story to be told. These women's contributions has been often overlooked or ignored. And you can tell that Shetley has put a lot of work into research and trying to tell all of these stories, and I am very glad that she has. She also includes a lot of historical context throughout the book, which I appreciated. We have World War II, the Cold War, the Civil Rights Movement, the Space Race. It's very helpful when you're reading to have this context, and it's also very informative because there were plenty of things I did not know about from American history. For instance, when laws were put into place to abolish segregation in schools, there was a county in Virginia which just closed all of their public schools instead of complying for five years. For five years! I would say that the book can be quite dry, it can get a bit bogged down in the technical details of the work that the women are working on. I personally feel like it didn't really need to so much, it felt a bit like a distraction. And I'm a mathematician and I'm saying that, and I'm not entirely sure how to articulate this so apologies, but I feel a bit like the book didn't entirely know what it wanted to be in terms of tone, I guess. It could have been a very dry, chronological account of these women's works and contributions, or it could have focused more on the personal side, treating these real-life people maybe more like fictional characters, let's say, allowing the reader to get to know them a bit and get to see their flaws and thoughts and feelings. This book felt a bit to me like it was doing a little bit of both, but not going quite far enough down either route, which um, made the reading experience for me a little frustrating, I guess. You know, it could have gone down the former route and been a very detailed account, but it wasn't chronological and it also flitted between characters a lot, so you weren't spending any significant length of time with one person, which could be a little confusing. And it could also focus on things which didn't entirely seem helpful. You know, like I mentioned before, the technical nitty-gritty. Or by... the book seemed quite keen on, um, like, linking together these women. Like, we couldn't just have a character on their own. The book was always determined that the reader understands that there were links between these people. Like, this person had this family member who was at this place at this time with this family member of this person. So then instead of focusing on the lives and works of these two people, I'm getting a bit distracted by these family members and trying to work out, like, timelines and things. But then on the other side there were these wonderful stories and anecdotes where you really felt like you were getting to understand these women and their experiences. For instance, when Mary Jackson helps her son to make a vehicle for a, a race, a soapbox derby, and Katherine Johnson's persistence to get into meetings. So I feel like the book could have benefited from, you know, going more down this route, focusing more on the personal side. I guess one of the benefits to this and it not being too much of one thing is that I was really bored when reading this book. You know, if I was getting a bit bored by the technical stuff, it would only be like a page and then we'd be on to something else. Or if I'd got a bit confused and wasn't entirely sure who we were talking about at this point because of all of the people, it wouldn't be too long before I was back to the story, back to being involved in the story. So yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that this book is important and the stories it is telling are important, the subjects it raises are important and we need to hear about these things and learn about these areas of history. And I would encourage reading this book and learning about these women's contributions and to learn about segregation and civil rights, which is still unfortunately very relevant today. Also, I'm just going to talk very briefly about the film before we end. The film definitely focuses more on the personal, it's far more of a fictional account, it takes a lot of creative liberties. It's far more character driven, it's far more humorous, it does have several inaccuracies, which is another reason to read the book. I'm glad that I've read the book now in order to be able to separate the fact from the fiction a bit more. So if you have seen the film, I would recommend reading the book. Also, if you have read the book, I would definitely recommend seeing the film, especially if you found the book to be a bit dry. And if you haven't read the book or seen the film, then I guess the question is which you should do first. My thought is that I kind of wish that I had read the book first, because when I was reading the book, I did get distracted sometimes by trying to equate names in the book with people I had seen on the screen, and trying to equate stories in the book with scenes I had seen on the screen. So if I had done it the other way, I wouldn't have had that distraction when reading. But then on the other hand, I feel like seeing the film first 
help me to get through the book easier because I was already invested in the story and the people. So that's a bit of an annoying answer. I'd say generally book first is fine, but if you feel like you might find the book a bit dry, then definitely go with film first. And I would say that I definitely prefer the film to the book, but I would recommend both because although the book has its flaws in terms of construction and reader experience, as a part of history, as an untold story, as it describes itself on the cover, I think it is really important. And I'm glad that Shetterly has brought these women, their experiences and their contributions to the fore. I will give Hidden Figures by Margot Lee Shetterly 3.8 out of 5. I would love to know what you think about this book if you have read it. So my next Quiet as Mouse book club video will be on the 15th of May, just over a month from now, and I will be reviewing Postcards from the Edge by Ty Fisher. I'm very interested to read this book. That's it for today, let's move across to the end screen. If you would like to see my latest video or some more book club videos from me, then you can do so below me here. And also you can subscribe to my channel or visit my website beside me here. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you later on in the week.